Okay. Uh, now we'll start with uh, some topics which are basically a little bit of what we have already covered in the high level course. And that's why I have kept it in the end so we don't miss the most, more important topics which, we, which were new for you in this course. So we are starting with uh, this topic which is about the components of a traffic system and their characteristics. Okay, and this is from chapter 3 of the textbook. So a traffic system has five components. Okay, the first one is a road user, which is a human element. Okay, any type of road user, whether he is driving the car or a passenger in the car, he is driving the bus or a rider in the bus, or even if he is not in the vehicle, like a pedestrian or a bike rider. Okay, anybody who is on the road, in the vehicle, outside the vehicle, is a road user. Okay, and every, each and every one of us is a road user, right? All of us are users of the road, whether we are driving or not. Okay? Okay? Then we have the vehicles. Now, in the previous topics, we have already looked at the types of vehicles, right? Huh? What types of vehicles we have? Heavy meters and the other one is what? Passenger car. Okay. Now you look here. They are saying the same thing. They are saying the same thing in, in different terms now. Okay. So we said passenger cars and heavy vehicles, right? Which of them is private? Passenger car is private, right? And commercial vehicles are heavy vehicles. Okay. So the same classification with a different name. Then we have the streets and highways, which are the infrastructure, any type of street, any type of highway. Okay, and we have already covered different types of highways in this course as well as in the highway engineering course. Then we have traffic control devices, the last topic we did. Huh? Signals. Signals. Signals are part of traffic control devices. Can you give me another example? Any other example of a traffic control device? Huh? Yes, okay. Any other example of a traffic control device? What is the traffic control device? Huh? You have been studying. Think. Okay. Then the next thing is the general environment. Anything which is around the height, the weather, the light, okay? Now, you, you are coming on the highway, you see what? Outside the, outside the university, if you are coming, you see what now? This week, you see something new, right? What is it? Started planning how what would you do on 15 and 16, right? Because you don't have to come here, right? And you don't know what is happening. You see the flags, right? You see the flags, they are not traffic control devices, right or wrong? Right or wrong? Huh? Okay, so they are part of the environment, they are part of the environment. Anything which is around the road is part of the environment because it can affect traffic. Okay? Clear? Hmm? Okay. Now, uh, you will start with the characteristics of the drivers. The drivers are very important. Okay. They, are, they are the ones who are involved in the accidents. They are the ones who are basically causing the accidents most of the time. It's a fact. Okay. Most of the accidents around the world are caused by the Drugs, right? They are the reason. Yeah, they do something which is causing that. Okay, so driver characteristics are very important. Okay, or even if you consider any other road user, they are human beings, right? Okay, 
So the characteristics of human beings are not the same. Every person is unique. Every person is different, right? Okay. But still, all of you expect anything, right? Okay. But all of you are different. Okay. So the speeds are different. This, the size are different and so on, right? So, if you are, uh, for example, considering designing a road, okay, and you need some characteristic of the road user, so you do a survey, or you do a study, and you collect data, okay? But in that data, you will find everybody has a different value, right? Huh? So, which value I will take for design from all those? What can I do? 85% are, why not an average? 85% I have to explain, right? What is 85% I have to draw a graph. Okay, and some of you still are thinking, what is he talking about? Right? No. They're still not thinking, no? But 85% are, what is easy? Average of 85% are? Average is easy, right? The y-axis is easy, right? So why don't we take an average? Very good point. It can be affected by the smallest or the largest value. Okay. You change just one value in the data set, and it will change. Okay? Yeah, very good. Okay. Anything else? Why don't we take the average? Where is average? Where is average? If I say this is the average of the data, where is the value? In the middle. Middle means what? 50%, right? 55, 0. 50% 5 years. Huh? Is it enough to cover 50% for design? We are talking about design, right? Is it enough to cover 50%? No. Okay? So this is what not a good approach for design. Okay? Because you are going to take an average, even if the values are close to each other. Okay? So that's why we take 85% average. Okay? So average is average. Okay? Average is average. Okay? So 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 average so I will take the 85th percentile, okay? But let's say if I'm looking for the lowest value, okay? For example, the speed of pedestrian, the speed of pedestrian, okay? Then the most problematic one is what? Who? Who is the slowest one, right? The slowest pedestrian is more critical for me, right? So I'm looking for the lowest value. So for the lowest value, I will take 15th percentile. Okay, so the values where the highest is more critical, I take 85%. The values in which the lowest is more critical, I take 15%. Okay, but the idea is same. You can cover 85% of the data and that is enough. 15% data, 1 5. 1 5 can be ignored. 1 5 is, 15% is negligible. Okay? Clear? Why? Because the population of the world is so much. 15% people will die, you will have more space, right? Very good. Okay. So, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, drivers are an important part of the traffic system. They are controlling the vehicles and they are uh, causing the uh, most of the accidents as well. So, for good traffic engineering, we need understanding of the driver characteristics because without them, nothing is effective. Okay? Nothing you would do without considering them can be effective. Now, what is our job as traffic engineers? Our job is to provide information clearly and effectively to the drivers so that they can take a safe and proper response. They can uh, give us a safe and proper response. The last topic, traffic control devices. We uh, looked at the requirements of our effective traffic control device. They are the same points. The points which are mentioned here in the second bullet point, they are the same items which are mentioned in the requirements of an effective traffic control device. A traffic control device should be clear, it should be effective, it should provide enough time and so on. 
Third meaning what? The device should be prominent. It should be uh, with a you know with a color which you can see easily. It should be in a language which you can which you can read easily. It should show symbols which you know. Okay, and so on. Effective means what? It should be uh, serving a need. I provide a device where the driver needs it. The driver is coming towards the intersection, or he needs to be show the he needs to see the stop line. He needs to see the directions now. Okay, so this is what we mean by effective. Okay, wherever you feel the driver will need now information, you provide it then and there. Okay, and safe and proper response is related to the side distance. Okay, there's a stop line. Stop line for stopping, and I need 15 meters to stop. The so stop line should be visible from 15 meters. I need to change my lane to change my direction, and you are showing me the uh, the arrows or the board with the directions, okay, so, uh, from a point where I'm already at the intersection, not good, okay. So I should see the information with enough time to do my action, okay. So this is linked with the side distance, okay. I give give him enough side distance. In this process of uh, doing, uh, getting the information and uh, doing the action, there are two characteristics of the drivers which are involved most of the time. One is visual equity, and the other one is reaction process. You see and think. You see something and you process it. Okay, and this is this is the most common way of. Uh, the process that you are receiving information how through vision okay sometimes we receive information through other senses as well like what huh? listening but right? you listen what music huh? what listen what the horn the, horn, the siren okay? you listen right uh, sometimes something goes up in your car as well. You're not very busy. So, yeah, you receive. In some cases, you receive. You may receive the information through hearing as well, but this is very very rare. Okay. In most of the cases, you you see and you process. And this is why they do the eye test, right? They don't do the hearing test. Right? I mean, go for the last. <laughs> they do the eye test. Right? They don't do the hearing test. The room, the touch test. The room, only the eye test. They did for you. No? Okay, but I was saying that in many cases we see and we start thinking about it simultaneously. Right? These two characteristics overlap if you are outside the class. In the class, you guys are looking at me and you are thinking. He's thinking about them. He's thinking about how. He's thinking about how. You are good. Good. Okay. Normal people, when they are outside the class, they see and they start processing the information. Okay. So these two conditions or these two processes are overlapping. Visual equity and reaction process. Vision and reaction process we can measure them in some way or the other. They can be quantified. You can give them some numbers. You can tell me some numbers which are related to the vision and the thinking process. We will talk about these numbers. Okay? But there are two other things which are related to the driver. They affect the driving behavior, but we cannot measure it. We cannot quantify it. Okay? We cannot assign any numbers to them. All the people claim on social media, do this test and we will tell you huh, what type of person you are. You cannot test, okay. Right or wrong? Huh? Answer these 10 questions and we will tell you whether you are aggressive or, or optimistic or pessimistic. You cannot test, right? You can click on anything. So 
So you cannot quantify what? Personality and psychology. So these characteristics affect driving, but they cannot be measured. Okay? Personality and psychology. Personality means what? The uh, personality of the driver, his background. Okay? The characteristics of the driver. His own characters. For example, education, experience. Okay? Is he local or foreigner? Or uh, gender, age, all these things are part of what? Personality. Okay. And then we have psychology, which is related to the mental and physical condition at the time of driving. Okay, the mental and physical condition at the time of driving. The same driver who is going for the exam and coming from the exam can be different. Okay, and he was going, he was thinking about A. Now he's coming back. And he is not thinking at all, right? Okay, got it. Okay, so he is tired. He is, he or she is tired or sick or ill or you know didn't have the good sleep and he is in a hurry. Something is happening and so on. Got it? Okay. So this is related to what psychology. What is happening to him or her at that time? Okay, in terms of has the body and mind. Okay, this is related to psychology. Okay. So I cannot measure them. So how do I make sure that any driver from any background in any condition will drive normally? How do I make sure about that? Enforcement of traffic laws and licensing. Okay. So, enforcement and licensing makes sure that all drivers drive in a proper manner. Okay, it does not depend if I am coming from Pakistan or you are uh, coming from somewhere else. Okay, now we are driving in Bahrain. We have to follow the same rules, right? Okay, the rules are same. We can, I cannot say I'm. This is my first day of driving in Bahrain, so I can cross all the red lights. Okay, it will be fine, but I will not stay alive. Okay? And same thing, I am in a hurry today. So I will not stop at any time. I cannot do this. Okay? There are laws for it, right? Okay, and how do I know about the laws? And how do I know what to do in one in uh, different situations? Through license. Okay? When you go for the license, they will check these things, right? Then he knows what to do in a tra on a traffic light, on a roundabout. Then he knows what to do when changing the lane. So, so a license basically is a proof that you know what to do. So you know what you are doing. Okay? Clear? Okay. So personality and psychology, because we said we cannot quantify. Okay? What were the other two characteristics? Visual equity and reaction process. Okay. Visual equity means anything related to vision. Any function which our eyes are performing is part of visual equity. Any function performed by the eye is part of visual equity. Now, alhamdulillah, our eyes are performing many functions. We don't even know. Okay. They are doing many things because we don't have to adjust it. Okay. There is no screw or there is no wall which you have to turn and the eye will do this. No. It's already happening, right? Okay? But this is just a glimpse of it. What your eye can do is doing continuously. Okay? For example, accommodation, changing of focus. Okay? So when you look at one thing and then you change, I look at uh, uh, this table and then I look at. Uh, Hassan, right? You see, my eyes need to change the focus, right? This is already happening. Okay? I can see, alhamdulillah, clearly this table and Hassan as well. Okay? And then we have static visual activity. Meaning, looking at the details of an object in a static position. Looking at the details of the object in a static position. Okay? This is what they check in the eye test. This is the eye test for. Can you see this? Okay. 
So the I test is we will stand there, there's a board in front of you, and you leave. This is static visualization. Okay. Then we have adaptation. Adaptation means uh, if I switch off one bulb here, the light condition will change, right? Okay. Our eyes adjust to these light conditions. Okay. So somebody is here reading a book or you are writing something in your notebook and I uh, uh, close one bulb, your eyes will immediately adjust. You will not go blind. Got it? May still continue writing or reading. Okay. That means you should do it. Right and read. Okay. Then we have angular movement. Judging the movement of the objects which are going across us. Across. So pedestrian crossing. Somebody entering the roundabout from the other side. Okay. So judging the movement of the objects which are going across the field of vision. Okay. Going across the ice. Going across the room. Okay. Movement in depth. Uh, judging the speed of objects which are coming towards you or away from you. Okay. So, angular was across you. Depth is towards you in the same line. Okay. So, how fast is the object coming towards you? Okay. And so on. So, the car in front of you, how fast is it going? But it, it has stopped how fast you are going. Okay. This is depth, movement in depth. Then we have color to differentiate between different colors. Right? There are people who can see certain colors, right? You call them what? Huh? Huh, what? Color flat, right? You can see all colors. <laughs> we don't know, yeah? Until somebody checks it, you don't know. Maybe some of us are testing. Anybody has checked it? Color flat is there. Anybody? So we don't know. I have done it. In our university, they used to check it at the time of admission. Right. If you are colorblind, you are colorblind, they will not let you do electrical engineering and mechanical. Civil, you can do. Okay, I don't know. But until you do the test, you don't know whether you are colorblind. All of us who are afraid, you will be color colorblind, don't know. Okay. Anyways, contrast sensitivity. Contrast means what? What is a contrast? Contrast means what? Hmm. Anyone? Same like brightness. Same like brightness? The same thing with contrast. Yeah. Means what? Means what? I don't know. Do the contrast, what happens? Uh, give me more brightness. More brightness, okay. Okay. Contrast. Something like this, but not exactly like this. Yes, contrast. If I tell you, everybody will know. If I tell you, you will think, oh, this, I, I don't know this. I do this every morning when I'm selecting my clothes. Contrast means what? Huh? Look at the board. Look at the board. What's the background? Why? What's the foreground? This is called contrast. You do, what you do every morning. You don't. No sense. No fashion. I don't be there. How much? Not changing the light. Not changing the light. This is what you think. Contrast means to have, to or to differentiate between the background and the foreground. To differentiate what is happening in the background and the foreground. Okay. So when you when we when we have a traffic marking. And we have a marking on the pavement. We do contrast, right? What is our background? Background is what? Yeah. 
Great. Okay. And the foreground is the marking is. What color is the marking? White or yellow? Okay. The background is dark. Okay. Black. And the foreground is black or yellow. We do it. Same thing with the signs. Traffic signs. Same thing. Red, yellow, or white. Okay. This is very easy to see. We do the contrast when we are designing the sign. We take care of the contrast. We make sure the contrast is very clear. You don't, you cannot miss it. Okay. But are all the objects on the road designed by us? No. We have black cars going at night. With the black background, what? Can we control it? No. Okay. So we as traffic engineers, we try to make sure we have as much contrast as possible. But the drivers still need this ability because there are things which are not in our control and the render drivers need a better judgment of the contrast. Okay, for example, I give the example of the car. Car has lights and it's moving. It's easy to detect. But what about a pedestrian who is wearing black color at night? The background is the pavement which is black, the night black, and he is wearing black. Okay, then you need the contrast ability to see that on the background is something else, and the foreground is something else. Okay, but Okay, when you change the contrast in the TV, background, the, the brightness in the background is changing. So you see the colors better. Okay, that's why I call it contrast. Then we have depth perception. We already talked about movement in depth. What was that? Just read it, no problem. Read it. Movement in depth is what? What is movement in depth? Yeah. To see the object or, or to detect the speed of the object which is coming towards you or going away from you, right? Depth perception is uh, uh, detecting the distance of that object. You are going towards an object or an object is coming towards you. How far is it? So I am coming towards the signal. How far is the signal? The distance. Okay. So that is called as depth perception. So movement is related to speed. And perception is related to distance. Okay. Then we have dynamic visual acuity. I already talked about static visual acuity, right? Okay. What was it? Static visual acuity? What is static visual acuity? Go ahead, read it, no problem. Yes. Huh? Condition? Okay. So this is same thing but in, in movement, dynamic condition. Okay. So it's ability to see the details of the object and you are moving. Now you can be moving or the object can be moving. Or both of you can be moving, right? Okay. All these cases are what? Dynamic. Only you moving, dynamic. Only the object moving. Dynamic. Both of you are moving? Dynamic. But there can be a case where both of you are moving and studying. Same velocity. Huh? Theory of relativity. If you are, for example, you look at something in the car. You are moving with the car. But when you look at something in the car, is it moving for you? No. For you it is static. Okay. So this can be a special case of static where both are moving but in the same direction, the same velocity. Then you can be, you can still have static. But all other cases are dynamic. All other cases with movement are dynamic. Okay. Then we have eye movement which is uh, changing the direction of the uh, the gaze, okay, changing the direction of the eye from side to side, looking at the hazards on the roadside object and so on. Okay, glare sensitivity. Glare sensitivity is related to uh, adaptation. Okay, so 
so i told you adaptation means change in life condition adjustment to change in life glare is also adaptation to change in light but extreme light extreme light for example you are in a dark room okay and then somebody just pushed you outside the room in bright sunlight okay so it's not like closing a bulb okay if i close one light here your eye eyes will immediately adjust a little bit you will not like i said you will not even feel it okay but if you go from complete darkness to extreme light even with the light you will feel blind not see anything for a couple of seconds this is longer this adjustment takes longer okay the extreme light adjustment takes longer okay when does it happen on the road when you are going in the tunnel okay so you are driving in the in the day and then you have to go in the tunnel okay you can actually feel it if there are no lights in the tunnel now to put the light okay then we have peripheral vision okay peripheral vision is the vision for the extreme the objects which are on your extreme sides okay the vision for the objects which are on your extreme sides okay so we will talk about it and then we have a uh, uh, versions which is uh, the angle between the line uh, the eyes line of sight okay so when you change your uh, when you are looking from one object to the other object you make an angle right your eyes are shifting with a with an angle that angle is known as vergence okay now for example i'm looking at you guys and somebody waves me from the door from the glass okay which ability will tell me that there is a person waving at me we talked about these abilities right which of these abilities will tell me that somebody is waving me from the side which one peripheral vision okay peripheral vision next one if someone is running towards you okay and you want to get you know avoid him okay because if he hits you he will die okay you need what depth perception movement depth movement or movement in depth or depth perception okay something related to that you want to see how far he is and you want to see how fast he or she is coming got it okay so this is how you use these abilities now i told you we can measure vision okay so we can measure it in terms of the angle from the line of sight we call it fields of vision okay fields of vision so the information presented to the driver according to his line of sight can be in three different ranges okay three different fields of vision first one is acute vision second one is fairly clear vision and third one is peripheral vision okay acute vision is the ideal case something is so close to your line of sight that i can see it very clearly and i can see all the details no problem for me okay because it's very close to my line of sight is right in front of me is literally right in front of me okay then we have fairly clear vision which is slightly towards the side of my line of sight so i'm looking here and the thing the object is slightly towards is slightly away from my line of sight okay so this is the fairly clear vision and the peripheral vision is something is away from my line of sight is totally on the side okay so like i said acute vision is directly in front of me so no problem fairly clear vision slightly on the side is still no problem i can still see most of the details i can still see most of the details of any object which is in the fairly clear vision okay if something is in the peripheral vision i cannot actually see it is just a sense feeling okay for example you see uh, or you are not seeing you are looking at the road but a car is beside you and you can actually feel it 
Okay, you want to change your lane, but you feel no, something is there. Even before you look in the mirror, even before you look in the side mirror, you can actually feel that there is something. Okay, so this is the peripheral vision. Okay, now if you are talking about traffic devices, control devices, signals and signs and these things, which of these ranges is enough for it? Huh? Fairly clear. Fairly clear is enough. If something is in uh, acute vision, it's perfect. Something is so close to my line of sight, it's in front of me, it's perfect. Fine. But even if it is up to fairly clear, allowed. Okay. Why? Because of the design. We design the devices in a manner that the driver does not need to have too much attention or does not need too many details. Okay. For example, a signal. You don't need to know the height of the signal. Okay. Or the diameter of the signal. You just need to see what? The light, the color, that's it. Speed sign. What do you need to know? The number, that's it. Nobody is asking for a height and diameter and how far is it from the road. Nobody. You just need to see the, num the number and the number is this big. Okay, it's not a small number. Okay, so because of the design, anything which is in the fairly clear range is enough. Okay, it's, we allow it for the drive. Okay. Now, where do we use peripheral vision? One thing I already mentioned that while you are driving, okay, you coming towards a intersection, okay, so before you even look on the side, the peripheral vision can tell you if somebody is actually coming or not before you even shift to look at the side. Okay, or you want to change your lane. So before you even look in the mirror, you have a feeling that my side is clear or not. Okay, but these are special cases. There is something in which we constantly use peripheral vision, which is the choice of our speed. When you are deciding whether you should increase your speed or decrease your speed, we are constantly using our peripheral vision. Okay. The choice of a speed or the speed which the driver is choosing, what do we call it? Free flow speed. Okay? So your choice of free flow speed comes from the peripheral vision. Uh, you may have calculated, you would have seen the equation of free flow speed, right? Which you use in the exam. Okay? In that equation, we are using what? Factor for lane width. Factor for letter clearance. What is this? A space on the side. If you give me more space, my speed will be higher. Why? Because of my peripheral vision is telling me I have more space. In front of me, I have the same space, right? I have the same road in front of me. But my peripheral vision is getting clearer and clearer. If you put a barrier here, it still give me the same road. My speed will be yes. Okay. So the uh, and they have done experiments for that as well. They block the peripheral vision of the drivers, and then they saw how they are driving. So with the blocked peripheral vision, the speed is much more less because they cannot see what is happening around them. Okay. So they become more careful. Okay. Now the problem with the information, traffic information, is 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 not static. You are moving, right? You are moving, okay? So I have to make sure the information gets to the driver in the right range at the right time. Okay, for example, I have a sign here which says that there is a curve ahead and I need to get the speed up to 40 miles per hour. Okay, now let's say I am driving at 50 now. Okay, so now you see the blue line is my line of sight. Okay, and the device is very close to my line of sight right now. The sign is very close to my line of sight right now. Okay, but let's say I, when I'm here, I'm looking at my phone. I missed it. I missed it. Okay, and I move ahead. Okay, so I read all my notifications. I gave my answer. I'm just coming in few minutes and so on. I did this. I went ahead. Now, where is the sign now? is outside the range. 
Now it's in the peripheral vision. So without shifting my line of sight, I cannot see what's written. Got my point? Okay. So the timing in which the the device comes in the clear range is also important. Okay. Clear. And one more thing, like I said, if the driver is looking at the road, then the sign is in the peripheral vision. Got it? Okay. It's the device is in the peripheral vision for a driver who is looking at the road. Okay. So I am looking at you. The door is in my peripheral vision, right? Now I am looking at the door. Is it in the peripheral vision now? No. Who is in the peripheral vision? You guys. Okay. So these ranges are in relation to the line of sight. Line of sight changes everything. Change. But what is our assumption? Where is the driver looking at? The road. Okay. So everything is in relation to the road. Okay. The next thing which we can measure is the reaction process. Reaction process is measured in terms of time. Okay, how much time the driver needs to process the information, and this process takes four steps. Okay, the perception reaction process takes four steps. Okay, and we have already used perception reaction time in the design uh, of the system. Which time? What did we get by using the perception reaction time? Yellow time. We get by yellow time using this. Anyways, so during this time, perception reaction time, we are going through four stages. Okay, the first stage is detection or perception. In front of you, I read a study. In front of you, when you look one, uh, when you have one glance in front of you. In that one glance, you may have billions of things in front of you. Billions. Okay, it's literally billions. From all those things, you select one which needs more attention. Okay, this selection is called as detection or perception. So I look at everything in front of me and I decide this one needs more attention. This is an object which needs more attention. I, I, I may have to do something for this. So this is detection or perception. Then the next stage is identification. Identification meaning gathering more information. Gathering more information. And then decision and emotion meaning you decide what to do. And response or volition is your action. You already decided now you will act. Okay. So for example, detection or perception. I look in front of me and I see a pedestrian. So everything else is secondary. What is the primary thing now? The pedestrian. Okay. Clear? Yeah? Because I don't like that guy. Maybe. Identification. Is he moving or stop? Is he move? If he is moving, how far is he from the road? Or he's already on the road? Okay. Decision or emotion. What should I do now? Stop if I like that guy. Alright. Got it. Okay. Response or volition. So I'm a good guy. I don't like him, but still I want to stop. So my response is what? What is my action? Break. Okay. So breaking is my action. That is the last. Thing. But the movement of the vehicle is not dependent upon my action. Yeah, it is dependent, but it is. It will not happen at the same time. So I push the brake, but the vehicle will still move. Okay. So pushing the brake, your perception reaction pro process ended. Your perception reaction process ended. The movement of the vehicle may still continue after your action. It is not part of your perception reaction process. Got it? So this is an example. For example, you are looking at the road and you see a signal. So signal needs more attention. This is detection. Identify the signal. You gather more information about the signal. What is the light of the signal? How fast I am going? How far is the signal? This is all perception. Then you see the light is yellow, and I am this much far, and this uh, this far from the signal. You decide what to do. Okay. And 
the guy is not from one of you, so he decides to break. Okay, so this is the last stage, which is action. Pushing the break is the last stage, which is the action. Like I mentioned, perception reaction process is major in terms of time. So these are the standard values of perception reaction time taken in design. So they did a study, and from those studies, they found in the perception reaction time which you can take for design in different conditions. They depend upon conditions, they are not the same. So for example, you are stopping at a signal which is very normal. You come to a signal, if you are at that, you stop. So it's very normal. So your perception reaction time is very low, which is only one second. You come towards the highway and you drive daily on this highway, you see traffic jam in front of you. Okay, or there is a, a barrier or a check post which you see every day, normal stopping. You stop because of normal reasons, which you have, which you already know. So perception reaction time again, more than the signal, but still 2.5. Then you have stopping on a highway for avoidance. So something unexpected has happened. You didn't know about it. Maybe there is a car which has broken down in the middle of the road. An accident happened. Okay. So something unexpected. So now you are, uh, you, you, you saw something which you have never seen before and you are stopping because of that on a highway. So you see, reaction time is more or less, more. Something unexpected, you need more time to think. Where? Okay, something unexpected needs more time. Okay. If you are doing the, if you face the same situation on an urban road, see the situation is same. Avoidance maneuver stop, avoidance maneuver stop. This is on a highway, this is on a urban road. Time more or less? More. Urban road, time is more. Situation is same. Something unexpected happens and I am stopping. Why do I need more time on urban roads? Because of the congestion. Urban roads are, have more population, more things around them. Okay. Highways have more clear area. Okay. So when you have more things in front of you, again you will take more time to think. Okay. And then the last three are also avoidance, meaning something unexpected. But my action is not stopping. See, my action changed. In the first two cases, the action was stop. Here, the action is. So I see something unexpected in front of me, but I just change my lane. I don't stop. Or I just slow down. I don't stop. Okay? So these are the reaction times for those cases. Okay, and again you can see when I go from rural to urban, the time is what is happening with the time? Increase. Why? Because of the environment. Okay? Urban areas have more populated environment, so we need more time. Got it? Clear? Something which I already mentioned, something unexpected happens, you need more time. Okay? We expect things to happen in three ways. We call them expectancies. Expectancy is how are we expecting things to happen. So uh, our expectancy can be for continuity, for event, or temporal. Continuity means what? Something which ha has been happening, I expect it to continue. For example, a car which is going very fast in front of me. I expect it to continue. Okay? A pedestrian who is crossing the road, he is already running. So I expect him to keep running. And he will cross. Sometimes you see a pedestrian crossing and they see you and they stop. It happens, right? Okay? But you are expecting what? He will go. Okay? So this is continuity okay some things are happening and you expect it will continue event is opposite of continuity something which did not happen you expect it will not happen something which did not happen in the past you expect it will not happen okay for example there was no uh, uh, there was no uh, side parking at this location so I'm not expecting anybody to come from the parking area. Okay? Or there was no pedestrian crossing here. 
So I'm not expecting any pedestrian to come in my way. This is event. And temporal, the last one, temporal. Temporal means I'm expecting things to change with a certain trend, in a certain manner. The, uh, the obvious example for that is a signal, traffic signal. I, I see the signal is what? Red. What do I expect? It will remain red. Huh? I, see, I expect what? It will? It will change, right? I am expecting it to change. But I know it will change to what? Yellow. From yellow it will change to green. So I am expecting the change and I am expecting what will be the change. This is temporal. Okay. The next road user, this is the only one we will discuss, the, is the pedestrians. Pedestrians are very critical because of their safety. Pedestrians are more vulnerable to deaths and injuries because a pedestrian crash, even if nothing happens, the pedestrian just falls on the road, they can be an injury, right? Just falling on the road is an injury. So, the pedestrians are more likely to get into injury and deaths. Okay? So that's why they are more critical. And they have proven it from the uh, from the data as well. Some of the data is mentioned here that the there are many uh, uh, crashes, road accidents, which involve pedestrians, and they end up in injuries and uh, deaths. When do these crashes happen at the crossings? These crashes happen at the crossings, and the crossing can happen on the intersection as well as from the middle of the road, from the mid blocks. Okay. So, if you have some situation like this, where the pedestrian can cross, the safest thing you can do is provide a signal for them. If you are allowing them to cross from the road, you can provide a signal for them. And when you are providing the signal, we have done the calculation in the previous topic. To check the signal timing, I need the speed of the pedestrian. And there are some standards given for pedestrian speed. Okay. I showed these values in the previous topic as well. Okay. This was the last step. Check the signal timing for pedestrian. There was an example as well. Okay. Some pedestrian crossing facilities when they are crossing again from the ground. So you can make the sidewalk depressed so they don't have to go up and down when they are crossing. Okay. And they, they may not, uh, they, they should not fall. We put these barriers so when they cross the road, they don't find a vehicle blocking their way. Okay? So you put them so nobody passes here. Okay? But this will do. And then we have the crosswalk which is which has a hump like this. Okay. So vehicles have to slow down. Okay. So these are some of the pedestrian crossing facilities when we allow them to cross from the road itself. Okay, clear? Any questions? Thank you. Tomorrow we will do the vehicles.